So today we're working on a trailer we bought. Flat trailer, it used to be a snowmobile trailer. It's been made a little bigger. But we want to put some sides on it. Now it has those stake pockets, but they're super small. Um, they're, they're maybe one and a quarter by three, so they're too small. I want full size, two by four size ones, so we'll be taking these off, welding on some new ones, and then get the sides up, and then we can use it as a good utility trailer. We'll use it for our snowmobile or for our hauling firewood supplies from Home Depot, etc. So here you can see the difference. There's the old one. There's the new one. The new ones are much bigger. They're also galvanized. So they have holes where you can bolt it, but I think I'm just going to see if I can weld them on with my old stick welder. First one around here, I think. Well, I have three for the sides. So I'll do one here, one here, and one all the way at the back. Two. So first thing we're doing is I'm going to drill a hole right through this. So that later I can put a bigger thing through. There's some other bolts there too though. But I'm not joining them. right while I do it. Right off. How are we going to get it out? Is it coming out? Matt? 
Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it's out. You just need to grab it there. Oh, the other thing is we should check the snowmobile ramp, see if that if this is going to be in the way of them. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Maybe you should measure how far away it is from here. Well, I'm just centered on the board. See, I'm on the third board in. Oh, yeah. And they're the same, right? Okay. WC60. Twist it out, it'll be a long piece. Well, you can't really, it'll twist back in. Cutting too much at a time. It's gonna break. Mensa. Next. Switch battery? Yeah. I need to switch batteries too, I drill. <laughs>
See that? See, there's too much of a gap right there. So we want to bend that flatter because or else it's harder to weld. So. Now take a look. Nice and flat, right? So uh, now we're going to uh, work on building the sides of the trailer. Um, the wood parts, we've got all the steel welded on so a few days later. i got these nice little brackets for the corners off Amazon. They go like this, so you can removable sides. But I'm going to bolt the three sides and then leave the back uh, removable. So let's get to work. stakes in. I'm going to get longer bolts, but I can still work on doing the side. You should grab it in the middle. the pattern I drilled screwed in four per 
per stake. One, two, kind of just a stagger pattern. And I can do the corners yet, and then the back, but that's gonna be another day. All right, so we're back today, and we're gonna hopefully finish up the trailer. We got some more hardware, longer bolts so I can bolt in the, uh, these sides really nice and tight. Um, some hardware for the back uh, gate. No bolts going through here. Just gonna be sitting in here with locking hardware onto here. So the back gate or the back wall is easily removable. So, looks like the kids have already been playing in here with their hockey sticks and balls, but anyways, let's get to work. So a little tip for cutting wood here, um, just stack a few blocks there to get the height the same. That way when you're cutting, it's not bending on you, it just rests nicely, easy to uh, just measure and cut. I got my hardware here. So, it was spinning on the other side, and there's no, because it's a, there we go. And it's because I had to hit it in, and I think some of the threads got a little crossed. It's a toughie, oh boy, this is not good. This whole thing is bending. This is not good at all. Why is it giving me so much grief? Basically what we have is here, we got the end of our lag bolt is not very good, so the nut's not going on. What you do is you take a die, you want the wide side out first. You can feel it's cutting new things, but eventually it'll kind of match up with the existing, and we're good. There we go. You could put oil on this to help, but for the amount I'm doing, I'm not recutting something totally. I can see actually halfway down here. It's also pretty bad. So see the threads right there? Right at the top there? Yeah, right in the middle. You can see they're kind of banged up. And if we look at those threads, now they should be a little neater. It might be hard to see at the camera, but anyways, that's the idea. As you can see, I'm trying to get these nuts on, I can't even do it by hand. And it's just frustrating because it seems to clog a little. There we go, that's good. Look at that, see? This nut is garbage. It just galled in there and it seized up. So that's done. So this one, this one goes on good. This one. Not so good. Not so good. So what we're gonna do is I'm just going to run the die through it quickly, or the tap through it quickly. Oh, Matthew's going to do that. Keep it level, slowly go through. You can feel a little resistance there because it's not nice and clean. You can add oil, but for the amount I'm doing, it doesn't really matter. Let's see. I'm good now. So, look at that. Whew. Lovely jubbly. See if we can do this without a. Uh, you there's the nut washer. Screw the nut on. There. Just by hand because this girl 
powder is a little low. Can't quite do it all. Am I tightening? No, you're loosening. No, I'm loosening. That's why it's so easy. That should do it. All right, next one. Yeah, I already pre-drilled, but it still is a little tight, so I'm gonna, after screwing everything together. Watch it. Now this time I can't put my drill in there. The way I'm doing it is, I want the, the sides to be removable. The theory is that once it's in, I can unbolt the free bottom, which I think I'll probably hardly ever do, because it seems like a fair bit of work. But then I can just slide the, the whole side right up and out, and then and leave the front in, because the front's probably always going to stay. James, and then it goes like this, it clicks down, it goes in, and then a little hole in the wood. Yeah. So that will go into here, which will, this will be good. The other one, I need to make a plate of sorts, because I don't have two of these. This is what we're starting with, and we're going to flatten it out, drill a big hole. I'm just going to start with the vise, see if I can squeeze it flat. Uh, it's just going to slide, no, here we go. You can hammer it, but this will be an easier way to start. And now we can hammer it. There, now we got a nice little flat piece. Cut it off, drill a hole, and it'll be golden. Make it slipperier. Yeah. So it can turn better. Okay. Well, there we go. Now we got a nice little bracket. All right. Last, I got to put some handles on here so I can pull it off. These are old tie-down brackets. They'll work fine as handles. So I'm gonna mount them here, and then we can take the back off when we need to load stuff in it. Screw holes are close to the edge, you want to angle it in so you don't splinter. Ah, I'm afraid of that. It's awfully tight. We have here. Here's the situation we have. So you look at the bottom, about a good half inch there. 
and I bent it in the top just to get these nice little corner brackets on. So there's constant pressure. The other problem is, once I bolt it all together, as I slide down, see? That thing is hitting those nuts up there. Two things I gotta do. I guess it's called a learning experience. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna move this to here, and then this little bracket down here, we're going to here. The other problem is the whole bending in part. I was gonna shave off some of the inside here and the whole board is gonna bend in. I'm gonna actually add three quarters of an inch to this board, to the two by four. That will put all the planks in a little bit and then everything will be square and neat. So that's what we're gonna work on now. I guess the old saying is measure twice, cut once. Doesn't really apply to this, but maybe it's just playing a little better. Sometimes when taking the last screw out, the whole board comes with it. Then it's a big pain. If that's the case, when you take that last screw out and the whole board comes out, it's because the head is in, it's behind the wood and it pushes it up. What you do is you take the second last screw out halfway. That way, that screw's still holding the board in. The board can't come out. Take the second last one out halfway. Then move to the last one, take it all the way out. It will come out because that one's still holding it. And this, since this head is above the, uh, the, the wood, it all comes out nice and easy. So I need two boards, 22 and a quarter. I'm not gonna get out my chop saw. This saw will work fine to cut this. If I was cutting more than a couple, I probably would get out the chop saw. Now we're gonna set this at seven eighths. This is one reason I love the saw. I used to have a master craft saw. I was always measuring off the blade to the uh, guide. This thing is perfect. You can set it. If it's off, you can adjust it. There's seven eighths. Height is good. Can attach your spacer boards. Okay, that's on. Now we can start reattaching. These are the boards. Why is it not coming out? What's it hitting? Oh, it's not coming out because I put those other screws in. The other screws in. Attaching the latches, like this. Perfect. Three quarter inch hole.
So, another trick. Before you get all the way through, let the point go through, then start from the other side. You don't splinter the wood as much. Looks a little prettier when you're done. In theory, the wood will hold it. But you know what? It came with this little piece of steel right there. Now the other side. So first we've got to find out where to drill our hole. Drill the hole. This bit is dull. Okay. Okay, done. Now what we're going to do is run around and cut the tops off of these posts so it's all nice and flush. I think we're just going to keep it about a quarter inch low. A little more right there. Let's just take a quick look at the trailer and see what we've done, what I would do different, possibly, and what I still have to do. Now, would I do anything different? I don't think so. Maybe, as you can see on the sides, it's 12 feet and I got three streaks. Probably got a little too cheap. I should have bought two more of these things. These streak holders cost $6.10 each on Amazon. Canadian. I'm gonna leave it, see how it is. It seems pretty sturdy. If I shake it, it's not going anywhere. No, I think it'll be fine. It'll be fine. They're all attached. Also, the idea behind these things, I bolted them in. Nothing's going to bounce out. I can unbolt it if I ever have to take off the sides. I did it in a manner that if I take off the back, I can take off the sides without taking the front off. Just by arranging these this way, you can see the side can come off before the front. Um, other than that, I'm happy with this. My next project will be adding a toolbox to the front. One other thing. I bought this trailer. I parked it in the back. This froze to the ground. I was heaving on it. I couldn't get it off. I hooked up my truck to it and gave it a little yank. Now, if you look here, this whole thing is it twisted on me. I can't twist it back by hand. I'm going to have to do something about that and fix that later. But next time, I should have just used like a sledge on the bottom of that jack to, to loosen it up. Lesson learned.